Parental discretion is advised for the following program. Now and Then Show with your host, Odd Bob Avery, is made possible by grants from the following businesses. The King of Hearts Goldsmith, maker of fine handcrafted jewelry. Menage a Trois, custom color and black and white darkroom service, custom photography and videography. Southern Exposure, a full service salon where people go to look good. The PM's Cafe, where late nighters go for late night eats. By John Chamberlain, signs, murals, and graphic arts, now located at the Casper Inn in beautiful downtown Casper. All that video, the largest selection of movie tapes on the North Coast. And the Casper Inn, the finest liquors and live entertainment in Mendocino County. Coming to you from that sleepy coastal village where hippies once roamed free and loggers once reigned supreme, but now where friends and foes alike look forward to these three words. Live from Mendocino, it's the Now and Then Show, starring that omnibus of talent, the oddest of all Bobs, Odd Bob Avery. This is Louis Dimitri inviting you to stay tuned for the next 60 minutes and enjoy Bob's guests. Uncle Sam, the Statue of Liberty, the fantastic Tommy Two-Tone, and a special guest appearance by our own president, Ronald Reagan. And now, here he is, a man who thinks the 4th of July is just a delayed celebration of his own birthday, Odd Bob Avery. Wow. Wait, wait a minute, wait. <laughs> wait a minute, wait, wait. That's cruel. That's cruel. Delayed celebration of my own birthday. Well. The 4th of July. Really, Lewis. Come on, man. You used to wear bright clothes. What happened to you? Welcome to the show. This is our fourth show, and this is the show that coincidentally coincides, as you hadn't noticed, with the 4th of July. Let's hear it for the 4th of July. All right? It's patriotic night here on the show, and as Louie told you, we have some wonderful guests lined up tonight. We have some extraordinary guests. In fact, we have Uncle Sam, who is not easy to get these days because he's cantankerous. We have... <laughs> Why do you laugh? I mean, it's true. You know, we have the Statue of Liberty, who is uh, needing some severe repair these days, but that's being taken care of also. We have a wondrous musician named Tommy Two-Tone, 8675309 Jenny Jenny. Do you remember? Yes, you do. And we also have some clips from the 4th of July past. We have some letters from home, which I'm not sure I want to deal with tonight, but I have to because the producer told me I must. And a couple of other surprises. So we'll be back with a wonderful show for you for the 4th of July, right, right after this. Thank you. The sirens will announce when the parade starts, so in the meantime, find yourself the best possible seat, sit back and relax and uh, enjoy what promises to be a fine parade this year. We've got a lot of entries, and a lot of late entries, so please overlook any confusion, which is traditional. <laughs> this little person right here is named Janine, we think, and she is lost and would like her lost mommy to come get her, if she would, please. So wherever Janine's mommy is, please come get her. Here is Miss Mendocino County, 1984. Jennifer Sparks of Ukiah, and she's riding in a 1973 Eldorado convertible. This is King Cluck. Oh, no. We thought they'd lay an egg this year. <laughs> Here in close unison, the marching pluckers. <laughs> Only in Mendocino, folks. <laughs> Recent studies have shown conclusively that heavy beer drinkers have a more highly developed frontal lobe and their pineal gland, located somewhere in this area, is 47 times heavier than your average beer drinker. It could even be said that heavy beer drinkers are more open-minded than your average beer drinker. So when you get an itch in your cerebral cortex, drink heavy beer. And now, 
another great American for heavy beer. Hello, I'm Franklin Delano Roosevelt. I've been dead for 40 years. More than 50 years ago, I promised you all a new deal, and I came through. And now I've come back to show you another great deal. Heavy beer. The only thing you have to fear is when you're out of heavy beer. I'm Franklin Delano Roosevelt. Thank you very much. It's it's out. And behind it's come our own storybook players, children in costumes who produce a lot of plays here during the course of a year. Great fun to watch. The storybook players. Coming up musically, the Mendo Core, Tom Quinn, A. Cunningham, A. Hay, B. Hefley, Rock and Roll. They wonderful they're great sometimes it looks like a primitive future for you guys but you know <laughs> it'll be all right I know our favorite people really we're back we're back was was that not a great clip from the 4th of July parade we have wasn't it yeah. thank you we have some more of those for you and uh, we have a couple of other surprises but right now the what has turned out to be one of the favorite parts of the program and I'm so sorry to have to admit it is the Letters from home. And we have a couple of those tonight. I hate to get into this sort of thing because it could open us up to lawsuits and all kinds of problems. Uh, but however, nevertheless, dear Odd Bob, having viewed every now and then show since number one up to now, I think that's redundant. <laughs> I feel qualified to comment on the proceedings. Well, that's good for you that you feel qualified. We'll see how you do. First, I love the Now and Then Orchestra. Well, there you are. Let me see. All right. They are sometimes highlights of the show, especially that Louis Dimitri guy. Oh, I know who that is. That would be Louis. Yes. All right. I hope he continues doing the show as long as he lives. That may be it, folks. <laughs> Secondly, I look forward to the commercial breaks and am continually entertained at the point of view presented in each of those satirical comments. Thirdly, if I was you, Bob, I'd change my coat for different shows. Well, <laughs> boing, you know, look at here, kids. You know, a new one. Right? I didn't read this beforehand either, you know, I did it all by myself. Either you, you've done every show the same evening or you never change your clothes. Well, I'd <laughs> you'll never know now, will you? It's up to you, a concerned viewer from Albion. It figures. Okay. Letter number two tonight. Dear Odd Bob, I saw your last show with the Alto Sisters performing. Oh, this person writes fast. And I must comment on your lack of tact when you repeatedly made sexist comments towards those two enticing morsels of femininity. Those two alluring beauties <laughs> must have found it hard to contain themselves during your verbal abuse of their obvious talents. So, Bob. I suggest you think twice about what you say before you embarrass yourself. Good luck, signed Peter Cox from Fort Bragg. Oh, I forgot. We had another letter. Wait a minute. We had another letter. This came through the window via brick just a few moments ago. Dear Odd Bob, this is not a threat. No joke, no mistake, a bomb has been planted in the Now and Then studio and is due to explode at 9.30 p.m. If you find it, you might 
defuse it in time. If not, I'm st this doesn't sound like a, a funny kind of a note here. A serial kind of guy. No, a serious kind of guy. This is not a threat. Do we have a bomb in the studio? Is there a bomb here? Wait, wait, no, wait. I mean, you know, I have to take these things. Considering the world climate, is this a problem? Do we have a bomb in the studio? Anyone seen a bomb? No. Other than the show, has anyone seen a bomb? <laughs> wait, wait. What's this? What's this? Oh, this is called stepping on your microphone cord. Well, all right. Follow me now. Follow me carefully. What does this look like? A bomber? Hmm. Hmm. What should we do with this? <laughs> we could reveal it to the world as a bomb threat or a bum threat. <laughs> Sorry, lady. Lady? <laughs> Uh-oh. This is a bomb. Oh, shit. We, we have a bomb in the theater. What do we do now? Nobody told me what to do now. What do I do now? I have a bomb in the studio. What do I do with it? Save you. Oh, give me a break, lady. <laughs> That's on some other show. Here we have a bomb in the studio. What do we do now, Michael? Here comes the director. Please explain this to me. What is that? Okay. Go on with the show. You all saw that. You saw that? Our producer, our producer, Michael, came in through that door and knew what to do when all of you and, and I and you, the band, who are supposed to know about electronic things, didn't know what to do. And he took care of it. We love our producer. Thank you so much. Now we can go on with the show. Oh, hey. All right. Thank you. I ran out of court. And you guys ran out of ideas, and you guys ran out of music, but he knew what to do. And that's what the Now and Then show is all about. So, I guess, at this point, we should decide what to do next. And I think we'll come back right after these messages with our first guest, a wonderful person. This, hey, oh, Uncle Sam. I remember Uncle, Uncle Sam. Sam. Yeah, Uncle Sam. Have you ever seen Uncle Sam live? You're going to see him now. <laughs> Be careful. <laughs> sneak it in there somewhere. <laughs> this is the bandit entry, 19 and a half. All right, for Surprise Valley. Hi, Brian. <laughs> and the Cadillac is underway again. Take lots of pictures. They want to remember this moment forever. Cat power, I see. <laughs> There's a dead tiger in your tank. <laughs> the spirit of the fourth. Having a hard time hearing your television? Not getting all the subtle jokes on the now and then show? Then you need new ear extenders. This way you can hear the gossip next door. You can even hear when somebody's talking to you behind your back miles away. And you can hear like a bat. Get new air extenders while they're still available. Hi. I've been enjoying heavy beer for a long time in aluminum cans and glass bottles. But I just bought some heavy beer in its new package. Same old heavy beer flavor, but a brand new package makes it more fun to drink than mother's milk. Heavy beer, package for those of you entering your second childhood. <laughs> There's a little footnote that says, not even Presbyterians are perfect, just forgiven. <laughs> 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 
Very nice. The Mendocino Presbyterian Church. Entry number 47A, the corners of the mouth, food for people, not for profit. And these are fruits and vegetables walking. They would stop spraying that way! Never! <laughs> <laughs> you wondered what break is all about, this is it. Nice, Louis. <laughs> I tell you, I can't get used to seeing Louis with this uh, thing on it. Louis the bug, right? That's wonderful. Does that help you uh, get through the night? <clears throat> yes. Yeah. It keeps me in contact with our. Where do I get one? I, I want you, one. You don't want one. I don't want one. It goes, oh, okay. I'm down with that's what it does to your mind? <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh. All night. That yeah, explains here. the music then, doesn't it? <laughs> I can't hear the music. Hey! Hey, watch it. New daddies don't get to say weird <laughs> things on this show, you know. <laughs> okay, as promised, we're back. Did we promise that last time? I we think promised. we did. Yeah, we're, we promised we'd be back. We're back. We have a special, special guest. This is someone that our producer, Michael Evans, who pulled the plug on the bomb earlier. This is a miraculous man, believe me went out of his way to find someone that you're not going to meet on your everyday television show and someone that you may never meet again on television, a very special guest, someone I've been waiting to get even with since 1957, frankly, <laughs> Uncle Sam. Sam, come on out here. I want you. After all these years, yeah, I want you. <laughs> <laughs> we'll talk about that after we the will? show, Bob. <laughs> oh, we will. All right. Well, Sam, tell yeah. me, um, what was it that Michael? <laughs> Excuse what, me. What are you laughing at? Uh, is there some, I know, something about the way I look? Uncle perhaps? Sam has told me not to laugh at this sort of business all my life, but I, I'm, I'm. <laughs> You want to have a little contest you, today? Uh, is that what kept you out of the service? I can understand that. Okay. Oh, no, it didn't please. work. I had to go in. It was. It didn't work at all. Oh, you must have gotten a uh, triple Z on the. Uh, no, I didn't. Mm -hmm. I didn't. I got a quadruple Z. I'm a Gemini, and I do everything by committee. Oh, I see. And what's your? You sign? do. See, that's what he told me then too, folks. <laughs> you know, Uncle Sam has the answer for everything. Yeah, you know? yeah. You're one of those kinds that you know. I can see you in boot camp right now. You know what I mean? Yeah, you could see me then, too. But what we don't want to get into that, do we? What a guy. It's my favorite man, Uncle Sam. You know, he did, he did a lot for me for about three years. Actually, almost eight years. What a guy. What a guy. It was good to have you for a while. Yeah, well, I was had. <laughs> <laughs> Truly and legitimately. Now tell me. Yeah, but why, uh, why did you condescend to uh, come and visit with us here? Well, I don't... Now and then. You know? I don't feel that it's uh, condescension to come here now, I feel more like it's time to, well, to show a different aspect of Sam. You know, like, we all know the old traditional kind of Sam, you know, the uncle kind of thing. You know, we know that Sam's had one heck of a history, been well, in you, wars all the time. I know, but you're kind of on the line now, aren't you? you uh, you've had some problems. Sure, you know, well, a, everybody has problems. No, no, I mean, there's a little doubt in people's mind about your veracity and the, and, and the fact that uh, you this is contagious? Yeah. Are you getting it out there? <laughs> I think a lot too? of things start with me, Bob, if you know what I mean. Yeah, well, Uncle Sam wants you. <laughs> as, as far as veracity goes, I would uh, just assume you used monosyllabic words when talking with no me so problem. that we can reach everybody no in the viewing audience. I'll promise to put the emphasis on the correct syllable. No problem. Were you trying to ask me a question, Bob? No. I didn't think so. Anyway, as I was saying... Has anyone ever succeeded in asking Uncle Sam a question? 
Well, this is the new Sam. You see, the old Sam used to tell people what to do. I want this, I want that. That was the old Sam. I remember that. We've been through a lot of wars, the Revolutionary War, War 1812, you know, the French-Indian War, the Spaghetti -American War. american War. Was that the Franco-American War? Close. <laughs> Thanks, Bob. You know, and then... Just across the border. And that, that war, all sorts of heartburn in the Civil War. Oh, Bob, you don't know what that does to a guy like me. <laughs> Let me guess. Well, no, you keep it to yourself. <laughs> you know, and so, and so after going through all that, you know, a, a guy like me, well... I've seen a lot, and I decided I gotta, I gotta get into myself more. You know what I mean? Sure. That's great. Well, let me keep on <laughs> talking exactly about it. Then. What you mean? Yeah. Anyway, Bob, as I was saying, you know, I've, I've gone through a lot of situations. The I want syndrome. It, well, it leads more, it leads more to involvements instead of relationships. You know, and well, I was, I was looking for a little bit more in my life. You were. Did yeah, you I was. find it? Well, I'm glad you, you asked found me that me, question, Bob. But that was 20 years ago, you know. Is that right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Bob, we needed lots of guys like you. Oh, you yeah. know? Talk, talk to the people out there, because you know, I've know, always wanted to do this. See? I, what, I, what, <laughs> uh, what the military has needed uh, in a lot of situations yes. is somebody with a good voice and a sense of humor. Oh. Now, now, there's people who are not meant to be on the battlefield, obviously. And then there's other people, yeah, yeah, you see? Okay, you're not a fighting kind of guy, you're just sort of a, you're just, yeah, yeah, okay, put it on the line. So anyhow, so we take care of guys like you and then we spit them out. What do you mean, you take care of guys like me? Well, what about your pension, Bob? <laughs> pension? Okay, you see, Excuse we take me. care of you. Excuse me. All right, we have a history for this, huh? So anyway, as I was saying, as I was saying about my involvements, you know, the it's I want... top drawer stuff, right? Is that, is that <laughs> right? Did you lose your cuffling, I know, Bob? I lost my pencil. <laughs> yeah. That's it okay. That's, somebody else is bound to be writing this down. Uh, I hope so. Anyway, I decided, well... Okay, I'm, I'm letting you have it here. I think it's time to get on with the show. I, uh, People I, have been saying this for years. My, my, Uncle Sam... What are you going to do next? Well, <laughs> next, I, I want to tell you about something that I did, though, because I can't think fast, of anything quick, else right fast, now. Fast, fast, because we have to take time out for these important words. But right after you tell us what you're going to do next. Uh, I'm going to talk about my affair with the Statue of Liberty. We'll be back with the Statue of Liberty to tell you exactly what happened right after these fairly important messages. <laughs> This will be opening very soon for your enjoyment. I love that license plate, Xanado. All right. And here is the one that was missing from the list originally. This is the Hit and Run Theater and Orchestra. Entry number 51. And judges, you do have this one on your list. Too stupid to live. <laughs> and now, another famous American for a heavy beer. You may not recognize me. That's because I've been dead for 75 years. But I'm Teddy Roosevelt, and I've agreed to do this endorsement because of my faith in heavy beer. So, if you're like me, you'll walk softly, but carry a heavy beer. A bully, bully brew. Yeah. This week on Rock and Roll Heat, the Rock and Roll cops go undercover in order to slow down the flow of illegal arms into Central America. All right, he should be here any minute. Yeah, yeah. we're going to buy some illegal arms. <laughs> yeah. That's what he thinks. Yeah. What do you say we go hide? Okay, better go. Yeah, let's hit it. I'm over here. I'm Cover me, you guys. as the boys try to bust a notorious arms dealer who has continually slipped out of the grasp of every major crime force in the world.
follow them as they get ready to spring their trap after months in the making. You got the arms, or what? You got the cash? What do you think? One hundred. Two hundred. Three hundred. Four hundred. Five hundred. Six hundred. Seven hundred. See, you count it. Let's, let's see the arms. Okay, you guys, get in here. Freeze. Hey, we got him now. You're under our breast. You have the right to remain silent. Shall we go get them, you guys, or what? What the hell are we going to do with all these arms? Resell them. Well, sell them to Larry Fuentes. He'll good buy idea. Them. He'll, that guy He'll will take them. <laughs> this was carefully and lovingly restored by members of the Mendocino Volunteer Fire Department and others, and it is something that we cherish. Looking good. Hi, Fred. This is the Grand Marvel. Yeah. These are the Mendocino hey. Volunteer Fire Department units. The pumper truck and fire units are all of the equipment and the people you see here today are volunteers and citizens of the <laughs> Can you believe it? Who else could possibly follow the figure of our country, Uncle Sam, except one possible person? And I'd like to introduce that possible person right now. <laughs> the Statue of Liberty. And right here on the Now and Then Show, folks. Come on out, Statue. Can't stand it, sit. I'm supposed to you what is this here? Yeah. Oh, please put that on. How do you do this? Well, people have done this for years. Uh, they've done it to you. Peoples. They've climbed your these ladders, they've climbed is... your staircases, they've walked in your head. I want to tell you something. They've these stood on your is fingertips. All foreigners. Yes. Oh, I can't do it. Are they French? Yes, you can. Would you like me to help? It fell down. I've always wanted to help the Statue of Liberty. Oh, this is my oh, chance. Oh. This is my chance. <laughs> A, a couple so of years ago, like no, so actually, much. see, a couple of years ago, some people asked me to send some money to help restore the Statue of Liberty, and I'm glad to see that it's been working. That's why I'm so upset. They say I need a facelift. They say I'm, they turn me into a bad lady, these people. It's disgusting. <laughs> I think I look as good as I did 200 years ago, and they're giving me all this trouble. Sam, it's nice to see you. It's okay to see you too, Libby. Eh, you know what? He never likes me. He never really liked well, me. Well, he said he used to date you. Is that true? Yeah, That's but true. he was so crass. He was so, give me, give me, give me. You go out, you cover your stop at the end of the evening. You want a little something okay, but you don't grab. Now, Mahatma Gandhi. Not, not, Sam, no, hey, no, wait, 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 and it's true, he didn't dress so well. He wore It's jacket. obvious these people have dated. <laughs> no, no question well, about it. Well, you want to hear wait, what wait, the no, truth is? Wait, wait, wait. I want the truth. Now, Sam, did you ever grab the Statue of Liberty? Uh, all, yeah. I can, all I can really say yeah. is that, well, I thought we were 
I want the truth. I want the truth now. I thought that the Statue of Liberty was was kind of given. Isn't that true? She thought the same thing. Oh. Unfortunately, <laughs> I got home late. I was I was bowling. I was bowling with the guys one night. I came yeah. home a little bit late. Yeah. A thousand construction workers all over her. Those in were bondage. Peace. In bondage. Those you should have seen all these things. Rivets. Oh. Rivets. Oh. Peace. Rivets. Oh my oh. God. My heart. It broke. I understand what you've gone no, through. No, it was Alex. Mahatma. That's oh. all. And the, and all his friends. Peace. He used to call them peaceniks, and they weren't peaceniks. Hard they were hats. good Americans. They were good Americans. Listen, what I want to tell you. I'm so upset. I was so upset when I came here. I'm going to call my psychiatrist. Is that all right with you? You want to use our yes, phone? Yes, I'm going to use your phone because Please. I came out here excited uh, and I'm upset. Producer, producer, is this okay that the Statue of Liberty could use our and phone? And then on I the can show? calm down a little and I can be funny on the pleasant and nice on all right, the show. He says it's okay. Go ahead. All right. Go ahead. Hello. Hello. Wait just a minute. Just a minute. Just a I minute. I want my charge card back next week. Hello. Hello, doctor. Doctor, mister. Doctor, psychiatrist. Yes. I'm so upset. These people, they're driving me crazy. They're pushing me around. They're fixing my face. They're fixing my clothes. They're driving me crazy. And, they're, and I don't like them anyway. And they're, ick, they're yucky people. And they're what? I said, I said, send me. I did not. Send me. Send me your what? You're tired. I didn't mean, I didn't mean. These are exhausted foreigners, yucky. They're sleeping in boats, they eat dogs. I don't mean that. I thought maybe some tired people that maybe they wanted to stop at Motel 6, they wanted to stop at the Hill House, something. These people are like, they're exhausted people. No, I said, I said send me, said, you're poor? I never said send me, you're poor. Pure maybe. Not poor. Who wants the poor? Do you want the poor? Do I want the poor? Do you want the poor? No one wants the poor. No, we didn't ask for the poor. What? No. They're foreigners. They're yucky foreigners. I don't want them. I, maybe I said it, but I don't mean it anymore. All right. Well, I'll finish the show, and then I'll come over, and we'll talk about it. Right? Yeah. All right. All right. All right. Goodbye. Goodbye. Goodbye, Dr. Mister. I was so Lord, upset. Oh, I was so upset. oh, I can understand. I is so this upset. why you're upset too, I Sam? So well, in a sense, I was. In fact, it innocence. Always, it always makes about me innocence. cry. <laughs> <laughs> We're talking a bit of uh, an abused lady. Sam, remember we had fun. She has the rolling pin. Oh, that shows you where the, the abuse comes pen? from. The pin is all in your <laughs> Do you still have those little notches in your rolling yeah, pin? Yeah, I do. <laughs> now you've seen it, folks, right here on the Now and Then Show. You are the Statue of Liberty, too. Oh, <laughs> and, and Uncle Sam got pinned right here, right on the Now and Then Should show. I show you guys my new coat? I you don't want think to see so. my new coat? You don't want to see it? I'm going to change my style pretty soon. This is soon. what we've all been sending our money in for? Yes, I'm going to change. I'm going to have a new hat. I've been wearing the same hat for years. I'm sick and tired of it. I'm going to get a new coat. I'm going to look gorgeous. But you'll look the same, sort of, in a way, right? Well, I'll look the same. It'll be the same effect. But, you know, America's changing. We want something more, you know, stylish. Right, and then I can go and I can visit. I'm going to go to Mendocino. I'm going to visit. I'm going to be a tourist. Ah, I'm going to the Hill first. House. The Hill House? Yes. Mm. What and about you, Sam? Are you going to come with her? Will Uncle Sam come to Mendocino? Will the Statue of Liberty get a new coat? Will all of these things come to pass? We'll find out in a few minutes right here on the Now and Then Show. So stay with us. Thank you. And now, Sons of Famous Americans for Heavy Beer. Hello. 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 You may not recognize us, because we don't look like our dads. But, in fact, we share something in common, and that's heavy beer. Hey, stop it, you guys. 
heavy beer. Goodbye. Goodbye. Come on, look, the light just went on. I've got to go back, okay? You did this to me last time. Don't do it again. Promise? Promise? All right. Okay, thank you. Thanks to Mom, right? Thank you, Mom. Thanks for being here tonight, Mom. All right. Okay, Mom. No Fourth of July is complete without a Mom, right? We're back. And the question that my mother asked me is, how are you going to top the uh, Statue of Liberty and Uncle Sam? Well, it's hard to do, not to mention those letters that we had earlier. However, the way we do it is by introducing you right now to a fellow who is an internationally known, very fine musician, a man of digits. I'm going to leave out the first prefix because he has gotten a lot of uh, threats of lawsuits from this prefix. So we'll just call him 5309 Jenny Jenny. I'd like to introduce you to Mr. Tommy Two-Tone right now. Okay. Take it, Tommy. Get around, get around, girl. She's a get around, get around, girl. She's a get around, get around, girl. She got around. Me.
Come on over and sit down with us, will you, please? Thank you. Thank you so much for that fine music. I have a question I need to ask you. I bet uh, I've never heard it before. Oh, I bet you have. But well, maybe not. Aside from the fact that we have lousy color on this program sometimes, you know, um, why do you call yourself two-tone? Well, um, where I live over in Willits, everyone has a nickname. And uh, I used to drive an old Chevy that was two-tone. And my name started from there. That old Chevy is now on the cover of your album, right? I sold it to a lowrider when I went broke. Uh oh But it was on the cover of your album? A 1957 Chevy, as I recall? Yeah. You too can buy this album, folks. This is a plug, you know, for Tommy Two-Tone. Buy all Fine three album. of them, folks. Yeah. There are three? Yes, there are three. I thought there were four. The little four as I hold up three fingers. Only right? distributed in Brazil. Uh huh. <laughs> but I was fine. Yeah. <laughs> Here comes the musical interlude, folks. All right. Okay. What do you? What are your plans now? I mean, you've had a successful hit. You've had a, a record that uh, went up there and came back down. And now, what do you do with that? I mean, how does that feel? Well, I feel like I've conquered the world once and uh, came back home and spent about a year hanging out here at home. And Wrote a whole bunch of new songs. Is it good to be home? Yeah, I had a great time. Got to know my new daughter. Well, see, I that, if that's kind of a balance. I could have made a million dollars last year and never got. What didn't? Home. Why didn't you do it? It's too easy. Oh man, too easy. <laughs> Here is an inspiration to us all. It's too easy to make a million dollars. No, it's you're too kidding. easy to do a follow-up, actually, which I refuse to do. It's more better to look in your the daughter's son eyes. Son of Jenny, I refuse to record it. Son of Jenny, <laughs> but they might make a movie of it. Right? Yes. <laughs> Would you do another tune for us? Sure. I'm Maybe that one. Woo! That very one. <laughs> Band ready? Yeah. Everything kicked in.
Remember that number, folks, 867-5309. You'll never have to write it on the bathroom wall again, ever. <laughs> it's been recorded. Tommy, thank you very much. Thank you, Bob. We'll be right back with... We'll be right back with a very special, strange, important guest right after this message, or maybe these two messages, maybe three, four, stick around. <laughs> Today's farmers not only interested in higher yields, but also in mobility. I've tried them all and that's why I use California potting bags. When my California tomatoes are ripe and the heat's on, I need security. And I get this security from California potting bags. When you can't afford to have your California tomatoes stuck in the ground, use California potting bags. I think you'll like them. They come in a few different sizes. Gotta run now. Good luck. See you in Hawaii. People for a nuclear free future. And that apparently for all intents and purposes concludes our parade for today, ladies and gentlemen. I'd like to thank you all for coming and being with us and helping us celebrate this 208th anniversary of our independence as we do it here in Mendocino. I'm Odd Bob and I appreciate all of you uh, bearing with us today. It's been fun. Thanks again.
Well, we're back. And I would like to take the opportunity right now on the 4th of July program to introduce someone whom I never thought would take the chance to, to be with us tonight, a man uh, who has humbled us all with his wit and indifference, a man who has come from rather humble beginnings to seduce an entire nation, the current resident of the United States, Mr. Ronald Reagan. Ron? Oh, sir, sir, it's my pleasure, sir. Please, uh, we are humbled. Please, would you would you join us, please? The uh, Statue of Liberty and Uncle Sam are here, and and uh, oh, I am absolutely overwhelmed, Mr. Reagan. Uh, I mean, what 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 is it that you? felt was necessary to bring you to the Now and Then show. I'm just totally well, Mark, overblown. It's, it's, um, it's that I'm, I'm willing to help a fellow Wait, just, Mr. President, sir, if, if you would, please, if you could uh, sort of clip this to your lower lip okay, or I'm just your right. necktie would be fine. That'd okay. be good. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Um, well, he's a man who's been known for a stiff oh, upper lip. Oh, here we no, no, upside down, sir. I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> Nancy usually does this for me. <laughs> oh, she does. I see. She keeps it up for you. I'm fine. All right. I thought, you know, um, when I have an opportunity to help a fellow enticer, I do it. We oh. can all use the help, I feel. Well, you must mean our producer director. Well, I wasn't going to mention any names, but, well, you can figure it out, I think. Well, yes, of course. I, uh, I have a couple of questions, if you feel up to it. Bob, go ahead. Shoot. <laughs> not, not little rate. No, oh, not no, please, rate. Mr. President, sound fellow. No, okay. <laughs> uh, very witty, very quick, Mr. President. I'm, yeah, well. I'm so delighted. Anyway, is it, is it true that you intend to have lasers in orbit before the end of... Uh, well, that's a very uh, hard question. But, there. <laughs> um, uh, as you know, Bob, space is a vast, uh, empty... Yes, out there. emptiness. And, yes. Right, emptiness. And um, we feel that uh, lasers are the best way for us to protect our future in this country. Well, I guess that's right, Mr. President. I mean, you are, you are the president, right? Isn't that so? Um, Mr. Reagan, sir. Um, Mr. Reagan? Hmm. Uh, just not if that's true, sir, please. Well, <laughs> President Reagan, uh, we're really delighted delighted to have Mr. Reagan on the show. I'm sure the uh, Statute of Liberty is uh, happy to have Mr. Reagan on the show. And uh, Uncle Sam, aren't you happy to have Mr. Reagan on the show? May I say something? I wish you would, please, because we're getting like close to the end, and, and if anyone could help, you could help like us now. What I'd like to say is this. If we can send the man to the moon, why don't we send him? <laughs> well, that brings us very close to the edge. I mean, the end of our show, friends. And uh, I didn't. All right. Now, I'd like to ask the Statue of Liberty to help us our show to a, a fine conclusion by reading us a piece that she feels and I feel is appropriate for the times. Bobby, okay, would you help you us out? Yeah. And we'll see you all on the 4th of July. This is from the President's letter at the Institute of Noetic Sciences. It's an affirmation of global peace that he asks everybody to make all the time, at least once a day. I see a world in which there is a global commonwealth with war having no legitimacy anywhere. There is universal support of appropriate peacemaking institutions. Each of Earth's citizens has a reasonable chance to create, through his or her own efforts, a decent life for self and family. Men and women live in harmony with the Earth and its creatures, cooperating to create and maintain a wholesome environment for all. There is around the globe an ecology of different cultures, the diversity of which is appreciated and supported. Throughout, there is a deep and shared sense of meaning in life itself. All right.
Thank you so much. Wait a minute, wait a minute, I'm sorry, what are you doing? This is a hijacking! Oh. Of what? You can't take over this show. Oh, we want to go. You can't, I'm here. sorry. You sit down! Shut up, you sucker! Got Louis. I'm sorry, you Keep can't do this. Keep your eye on everyone. Come out! We've got some demands to make. I don't care if you have any demands. Sit down, sucker! Oh, oh, I'm not staying for this! You shut up! This is terrible! Uh, sit down and you, shut up! I. This, you... You can't I, push you liberty. Sit down! Oh, no! 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 No, 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 Shut up! Back here! Forget her. She's unimportant. Come out! Listen, I'd like to thank our guests. Shut up! Shut up! This show is over. Like to shut up! Thank Uncle Sam. Shut up! You're asking for it! And the Statue of Liberty. And yes, shut up, Ronald Reagan. wrong here. And our letter writers shut are up. being with us. We've tonight. got some demands. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 You can't yeah. do this. We've got demands. Uh, can we talk? Can we see the demands? No. no, I just want. No, to there'll be no talk. talk. Sorry. Can we see shut the demands? Up. Shut up. Shut up. Can we see the demands? Shut up. We want to see the demands. Okay. Here are the demands. Shut up. I want to see. Begin with, we're the Television Liberation Front. Ooh. Ooh. Oops, excuse me. We're yes. sick of the current programming. This show has no redeeming value. We took it down to the Blue Chip Redemption Center, and they said nothing out. <laughs> so this show is off the air as of now. We're going to stay here. We're going to be here for a long time, too. Nobody move over there. Be careful. <laughs> Believe me. <laughs> you have no problem with me. Okay, to begin with, we're going to need a case of nuclear power packs. I'm sorry, aren't, aren't those very expensive, nuclear power packs? How much are they? I, how much are they? Oh, I don't know. Right. 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 Just get them here. Expensive. Just get them here. Very expensive. Very expensive. It makes no difference. I'm Just get them here. Producer? We're going to be here for a while. We're going to need some pizzas. Packs. We're going to need some heavy beer. Heavy a lot beer. of heavy beer. A lot of it. I'll go with the heavy beer, but uh, I'm not sure about the nuclear power packs. Just get them here. How much heavy beer? Uh, could I suggest a vegetarian pizza, please? I think something that's really mild. Shut is up, hippie! I've had enough trouble from you already. You've been causing trouble for years. You got that right, Jack. Thanks, folks. We'll be back right after the 4th of July. <laughs> Where's Nancy? Where's Nancy? Where's Nancy? Nancy who? Shut up, hippie! Yeah. <laughs> Nobody move over there. Be careful. <laughs> sit down! You can't do right this! Now, sit down! You can't do this! Right now, we've got one more demand. We want the show off the air now. In the booth. You off the air. You can't do this. We've still got it on the monitor. Off the air now! If off the air! We interrupt this program to bring you an STOP TV news break. Our mobile unit has just arrived at the ROP video studio, where it seems the Now and Then show has been hijacked by terrorists from the Television Liberation Front. There are a number of hostages being held inside, and there are no negotiations at this time. We pray for their safe release. As any further developments come along, we'll keep you informed. In any event, there will be film at 11. Greg Hillman, STOP TV News. This has been an STOP TV News break.